Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting snow angels and I'm sipping on some raspberry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks so let's get painting and let's get sipping all right so for my materials today I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas if you're painting along with me you can certainly switch up the size but that's what I'll be using I'm going to be using acrylic paint today my colors are cobalt blue titanium white mars black burnt umber which I like to call brown and fire red and of course you can switch those up if you'd like but that's what I'll be using for my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have two brushes from my personal brush line, Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush, and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you could switch those up if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting the sky and the first coat for our snow. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are blue, white, brown, and black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little kind of sliver of the sky up at the top. This will be maybe about two inches tall. And then I'm gonna be doing the entire rest of the canvas with a base coat for my snow, which will be a custom gray color that we'll make. So I'm gonna first do my sky. I'm gonna pick up blue and white on my brush at the same time, about equal parts, and I don't have much of either on there. I'm gonna start over on the right-hand side, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down, I would say about two inches, and make myself a little bit of a marker, and then I'm gonna measure how far down I did that on that side, and then I'm gonna come and do a similar mark at about the same height over on the other side. This is just gonna give me a visual stopping point for my sky. Then with those two colors on my brush, I'm gonna start up in the top right-hand corner, and I'm gonna be using this circular type of motion to get the paint on. It's the only time I'm gonna pick up blue. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up white for the rest of the sky. So I am going to have it darker over in this top right-hand corner, and it's gonna get lighter and lighter as it comes over to the left. I just painted over that marker knowing that this is as far down as I wanna go for my sky. And I'm just kind of letting myself really almost run out of paint at this point before I reload with a little bit of white to get to this last area over here. And now I'm reloading with more white on my dirty brush and I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my sky. And once I've got my sky done, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry this brush. Let me just put a little bit more white paint over here. Wash and dry this brush. And this does not have to go all the way white over on this left-hand side. You actually don't want it to go all the way white because we're gonna be doing a little burst of sunshine on top of it later. So you want it to be kind of a little bit light blue over here as opposed to just white. So that's looking pretty good for me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry this brush and I'm gonna create a custom gray for my snow or for the base coat of it. So I'm gonna be using a combination of white, brown, and black. This is the gray that I'm going for. It's just a medium tone gray. How I got to that was I used a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, 
and a whole bunch of white. <laughs> and what I'm doing is I'm creating this mid-tone gray that will be able to build lots of texture and dimension on our snow. Um, I like to kind of start on the, when I'm doing elements that are gonna have a lot of texture to them, I like to start with what would be the darkest version of that and then just build my way to the light or the darkest to the medium kind of tone of it. And I'm gonna go all the way up to where my sky is. I can even just bump into it. I don't need a perfect horizon line because this is land. Um, and we're gonna have some trees over here and we're gonna have our sunburst over here. So you don't need that top line to be perfect where it's meeting um, the sky. I'm just kind of rubbing it in. It can even be just a, a nice soft line as those two meet. And then as I come down my canvas, I'm just going to be using a left to right brush stroke. You could certainly use any type of brush stroke that you want. You could use circles, you could use dots, just as long as you get a coat of this color on there. In, in whatever application method is comfortable for you is totally fine. And then you could even paint along the edges of your canvas. Some people like to paint like along the edges. That's going to make your project look nice and finished and it will prevent you from feeling the urge to put a frame around your painting because if those edges will be nice and finished looking. And then once we've got this step done, we will be using this same large brush for the next step. So I'm just going to make sure that I get all the way around my edges in through here, making sure I've got a good coat. Even if you don't have a perfect coat, like if you still see little spots of your background or of your um, canvas showing through those little um, tiny white speckly marks from the canvas, that's okay because we're going to be doing an, a, a second coat on the majority of this um, of this ground so you don't have to worry about little imperfections in this base coat. And then again I'm going to be using this same brush for the next step so I'm going to wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our pine trees. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, gray, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna be uh, creating these in a carefree, kind of out of focus type of way, way off in the distance. I just want them to add to our atmosphere but not take away from the, from the show. So they're just gonna be a, our background noise, so to speak. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be creating a whole tree line of them kind of from the edge of my canvas, um, maybe a little bit past the halfway point. If this is about halfway, I'll be going a little bit to the left of that. And then I'm just gonna really get some out of focus um, kind of transition from my ground to my sky. I'm gonna start with black and I'm gonna work my way to gray and to white. And it'll end up looking like these trees are not only being illuminated by what's gonna be the light source over here, but they might have a little bit of snow on them as well. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black on my brush, so just a very little bit at the tip of it. I'm gonna start over on the right-hand side because I know I want that to be the darkest, and then I'll work my way to the right and kind of let myself run out of paint. So I'm gonna start right along this um, horizon line in through here. I'm gonna get it to uh, blend in with that snow ground a little bit just by kind of wisping my brush left to right just so I have a nice soft entry into there and what I'll do I'm going to bring this out right about to maybe about here that'll be where I'm going to create the trees and I'm going to start bringing this up in these uh, the illusion of triangle type of shapes. I don't need them all to be perfect. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of tapping my brush, creating this triangular type of shape. And you can even bring some up past the edge of your canvas and I'm allowing them to have some soft kind of edges to them. So that's why I'm tapping my brush as opposed to painting it in a, in a line like that. Tapping it is gonna give me these kind of uneven type of edges to it, which will make it look nice and organic or natural kind of appearance to it. And they don't all have to be the same height. Some of them can be wider, some of them can be thinner. You can make them look like they're in front of one another, which we'll do that in a second when we start to incorporate the, um, the gray into it. And then as I go towards this left, I'm just gonna 
get them to be all different kinds of heights. Maybe they're a little bit shorter as they're coming over here towards the left. And you know, you can really use a different types of brushes to create this, um, this type of effect with the, the fluffy kind of edges to it. You could use a fan brush, you could use you know, this, kind, this type of bristle brush like I'm using. So whatever your preference is, is totally fine. As I come towards this left, you can see I've got them shorter and shorter. And then as I'm gonna come over towards this left-hand side, I'm hardly touching my canvas and I'm just rubbing a little bit of that black out in through here. So this is gonna make this look really kind of out of focus as it's transitioning off into the distance. And then just kind of with those remnants, gonna just get this to blend in just a little bit in through here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel just to make sure I don't have too much black on it. I don't need to wash it. I'm just kind of giving it a squeeze in my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that gray and this is going to start the illusion of snow on the edges of them or them being lit up by the light source. So I'm gonna put this on the left-hand side of the trees and I'm just gonna kind of lightly tap it down those sides. And you don't have to do it on every single tree. You can really skip some trees. Some trees might be a little bit behind others. So if I want this one to look behind, I would just put it down towards about here. And then I could certainly put some on this one. And I don't necessarily need it to be just on that left side. You can kind of have it transition off into the right. And again, I don't need to do every single tree. So I might keep a couple of these with just their black on it. Maybe this one comes all the way down. And of course, this is just giving you a faint illusion of it. So now what I'm gonna do is, again, just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white on the tip of it. So just a little bit of white. I'm gonna have these ones on the left-hand side a little bit brighter. So these ones are gonna have a little bit more of this snow you know, representation on the edges of them. And again, I'm just faintly just tapping just a little bit of this on here to give it the illusion of little bits of snow just kind of being lit up by whatever that light source is. And if you ever do too much, you can always bring back some of the black. So don't fear painting, you know, over painting. You can always correct it with a little bit of black. And then you just make little fiddling. If there's anything else that you wanna do, let it dry, see if there's any additional marks that you wanna make. And then we are gonna be using this same large brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second layer to our snow. So I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are white, gray, maybe a little bit of blue, brown, and black. <laughs> I'll show you what I'm gonna do. What I'm in essence doing is I'm creating a little bit of texture. Oh, and I'm gonna do my sun too. So I'm creating some texture in my snow and some dimension in my snow. So I've got my sun off here. So I'm gonna have my snow the brightest over here and I'm gonna get it to kind of go darker and darker as it comes down towards the bottom and over to the right. How I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be adding white up at the top and then as I come down, I'll be introducing some of I'll blend it in with that background gray, but I'll also add a little bit of maybe blue, brown, and black as it gets down towards the bottom. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of white paint on my brush just to get this top region up in through here. I'm gonna be using this scrubbing or scumbling type of brush stroke because I wanna be able to take these colors and just kind of blend them in with one another and give this nice soft appearance to it. So by doing this, it will allow me to still see some of that background color underneath. If I was to just go really heavy on the white, then I would just have a flat color. So by using the white and just kind of scrubbing it on here, again, this is gonna give me some soft texture to the, um, to the snow, as well as allow me, again, to see that color, that some of that gray underneath and provide me with more opportunity to build more dimension onto, onto the snow. So uh, that's good for in through there. Now I'm gonna pick up white plus my gray on my brush because I'm gonna transition down into the darker region. So I have white plus gray on my brush and I'm gonna do the same thing. Just kind of scrub it on here, let myself almost run out of paint before I decide what the next uh, color combination is that I'm gonna do. 
And again, because I'm scrubbing it and rubbing it on top, it's allowing me to get this great um, effect with the other colors underneath it. As I'm moving towards the right and towards the bottom, I'm gonna pick up my gray. And I think right now I'm just gonna pick up gray on my dirty brush, just so I can get this um, lighter area to blend into that already um, gray region. And so I, I have a good transition without it looking too choppy. So I just picked up just my gray on my dirty brush to get these two sections to blend in well together. And now I'm gonna start picking up gray plus a tiny bit of cobalt blue, just an itty bitty, tiny, tiny bit on my brush. And this is gonna give me that kind of cold, snowy type of effect to, to the color of the snow. So that was uh, gray plus a tiny bit of the cobalt blue. I'm gonna do the same thing over on this right hand side. And you don't need a lot of that blue. Just an itty bitty bit will allow you to get that um, that coolness into the into the color combination of it. And you can even go right over some of your um, transition into that tree line a little bit. And now I'm gonna pick up gray plus a tiny bit of brown and black just to get this dark, the bottom the darkest. So I've got my gray and I'm picking up just a teeny dot of both black and um, brown on my brush. And I'm gonna have this down towards the bottom, maybe a little bit more so we can actually see it. <laughs> Sometimes I err a little bit too much on the side of caution. <laughs> so this is gray plus black and brown. And again, this is just in an effort to give my entire canvas some good dimension. I'm putting a little bit down here on this bottom left side as well. And again, once I've got this done, I am, I'll probably let it dry and see if there's any additional um, dimension that I want to add to it, but I'm going to do my sun as well. Now that since I've got this large brush coming up this side over in through here and pick up a little bit more brown and gray just to get this to transition nicely. And I love it when my colors talk together. So that's why I like these backgrounds to have so much um, kind of transition and gradients to really get those colors to talk together and to get a lot of dimension within the whole composition. So by doing a step like this, even though it seems kind of you know carefree and um, chaotic in a sense, it just helps to add all the, those little nuances and bits of information into like a ground or you know into something that seemingly might be kind of flat and not have much information in it, this is where you can build that information. So now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint. So wash and dry my brush, I'm picking up a little bit of white paint on the tip of my brush. I'm really just gonna create this bit of a starburst for my sun. So I'm just kind of taking it from, I feel my sun is kind of over here to the left and I'm just gonna pull this out. I'm even gonna pull it in front of my, my land. So this way it's gonna look like that sun is just kind of beaming on top of the ground. You can pull this out as far as you want. Maybe you want your sunbeams to really kind of be super bright and casting, you know, shining really far out. It's totally up to you. And then once you've got this done, we are going to use our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can fiddle with this as much as you want. Put your large brush away take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our snow angels and our people. I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that you'd like, but I'm gonna use my chalk. I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide you through a series of basic shapes and markers and we're going to connect those and by the time we're done we'll have something that will help us through the painting process of getting these objects on here. So I'm going to start with my biggest snow angel first which I'm going to have over on the right hand side. I want these to kind of look like we are seeing them from an angle. So they're gonna be kind of distorted in their shape. So I'm gonna have them kind of elongated 
um, and skewed so the bottom of them is kind of bigger and that way it'll look like we're looking at them from an angle. So I'm gonna start over on the right hand side of my canvas. You're gonna find yourself about halfway up or down the canvas and then you'll come, so that's about here for me, and then I'm gonna come in about an inch. That's where I'm gonna make my first little marker. That's gonna represent the corner to the biggest part at the bottom of the, um, of the angel. So what I'm gonna do from here, just so I have a kind of a point of reference, I'm gonna come over to the left about here. So this is about the center of my canvas right here. I'm shy of that maybe about an inch, inch and a half. This is going to give me kind of my intersecting point of all the little pieces on the um, on the angel. Then I'm going to come down from here almost halfway between here and the bottom of my canvas. So I might be a little bit shy of that and then over to the left about an inch. I'm going to connect these three markers. So I'm going to take here, I'm going to connect this with a horizontal line, I'm going to connect here to here, and then when I can connect these two, I'm going to give it a little bit of an arcing type of a line, so something like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the arms to my angel and my head too. So I'm going to take from here, I'm going to bring this out in kind of a little kind of skewed triangle in that direction. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side, so something like here. Maybe this one goes almost straight from there, but these are way shorter than um, that one over there. This one actually I'm gonna bring all the way out to here. So again, if this is about halfway in my canvas, I'm about two inches to the left, or an inch and a half to two inches to the left of that, and then maybe this comes a little bit further, and then I'm gonna connect these with an arcing line, and then I'm gonna put a little oval for the head, something like this. So that'll be that one. And of course, it's gonna get uh, reshaped a little bit as we go to paint it in, but that'll give us a starting point. So my next one, I'm gonna have over and through here, it's gonna be smaller, because it's gonna be created from a smaller person. So I'm gonna do the same thing, kind of start myself with three markers. I'm going to, let's see where this one is. My first one is gonna be right about here. So if this is about halfway, up or down my canvas, I'm down about two inches from that and over to the right about an inch, inch and a half. That's my first marker. And then I'm gonna come directly to the right of this one till I'm about here. So this is about halfway between here and here. And then I'm gonna give myself another little marker in through there. And then I'm gonna come down maybe about two inches and to the right about maybe three inches or so, somewhere in here. So this is a little bit lower than this one. And it is, if I go straight up from here, it's a little bit to the right of here. And then I can connect these like I did for over there. So I'm gonna connect here to here, here to here, and then from here, I'm gonna give myself a curved line like that. Then I'm gonna create my two angel arms. So pull this out. This one's gonna go a little bit past there, then I'm gonna do it like this. I'll give myself a horizontal line like that. And then this one is gonna come out like this. And again, they're skewed because of the way that the um, that we're seeing them at an angle, and then we'll put a little kind of oval in through there. Then all I'm gonna do for my people is I'm gonna give myself some markers or like little stick people, so that way I just have a place to paint. I'm not gonna get great detail off of a piece of chalk, but at least I can mark them out where I want them. So I'm gonna go about a quarter of the way over or on my horizon. So if this is half, this is the end, I'm gonna go about a quarter of the way, and then I'm gonna come down probably about an inch from my horizon line, and I'm gonna give myself just a vertical line that's maybe about two, two and a half inches long. This is gonna be my adult person. I'm gonna have the head just a little in through there. I'm gonna just have a torso somewhere in through here and then I'm just going to give myself a couple of markers for legs. <laughs> you can see I'm just making a little stick person here and then that's just going to give me where the arm is going to go for the um, connect to my smaller person. My smaller person is going to come about up to um, maybe a little bit below the shoulders of the big person. So I'm just gonna give myself another vertical line that is gonna end up maybe maybe a little bit below this one or right along the same line. I'm gonna give a little circle for my head and then I have just a little rectangle for the body and then just a couple little marks for legs 
and arms. And again, nothing major. I'm just kind of getting my position in place. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. We're going to use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your piece of chalk away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the inside of our angels and the little footprints that are going to our people. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, blue, gray, and maybe a little bit of white too, and maybe a little brown. <laughs> I'll call them out as I'm gonna use them. So really what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to add some shadows and some texture in, in the inside of um, the snow angels to make it look like they were created by the movement of some legs and some arms, and that there's also the light source over here, so we wanna put some shadows to show the little piles of snow or that there's some depth within that uh, angel itself and the footsteps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first make myself a little bit darker version of the snow color. So I'm going to add, use my gray and I'm going to add a little bit of blue and a touch of black into it. So this is getting me just a nice dark shadowy type of color that I'll be able to utilize on the inside corners and edges of the of the snow angel and the footsteps. So this is about where I'm headed with this. So what I'm going to do with this dark color is I'm going to put it on the side that is on the, the side that is facing the sun, but we'll be putting a pile of lighter snow on in a little bit. So you'll see what I'm talking about. I've got my dark color in through here and I don't want clean lines. I'm really just looking to give myself this um, illusion of the the snow just being the it's gonna have little piles of snow here and they're casting a shadow into that little snow angel now we have a point of um, conversion right in through here but imagine that there was a person laying in there at one point in time so we don't need to bring all of these right to that center point so I'm gonna leave some little space to have um, allowed for a body to be in there so again just using my my dark snow color, my dark bluish gray color here, and I'm just kind of allowing myself to give it these um, nice kind of bumpy or textured type of shadows. So if the snow, if the person pushed it like this, there may be a little pile of snow here. So I might have some little shadows in through here. I would have some shadows in through here. So I'm just thinking wherever that snow got piled up, there'd be a shadow on the other side of it. So something like this, and again, just kind of wiggle in my brush a little bit all along this edge of what I would perceive to be the pile of snow in through here. We've got, we'll have a little pile of snow here, so maybe there's a little bit of darkness over on this side. We're gonna be um, kind of finessing the edges of the snow piles in a little bit as well. So I'm gonna pick up some more of that dark color mixture that we just created. And again, just putting these little bits of shadows in where I feel that they would be represented from the sunshine up above and then, or, you know, on the opposing side of those little piles of snow. So in through here would work. Might have maybe one over in through here, maybe a little bit on this side of this one too. So all of my chalk marks are kind of in my head representing the, the um, piles of snow that were created during this angel making process. So maybe something over here, but this might be really snow like piled over here. So this is looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna do the same thing with my footsteps. So I'm picking up a little bit more of that dark color. I'm gonna have a couple of footsteps going through here. So they're gonna be bigger where they're closer to the angel and get smaller and closer together as they go towards the person. So I'm gonna have maybe one in through here, here, and I'm just gonna kind of make these little marks going up towards that person. So something like that will work for him and then, or her, whatever it ends up being. So we've got this one in through here. And I'm also gonna, you know, know that this might not represent the full footstep because this is m more the shadowy part of that footstep. So you can certainly have fun with putting those wherever you want. So once I've got that, now I'm gonna create some movement and motion into my um, snow people. So I am gonna use a little bit of this dark um, color plus my gray. So I've got my dark blue plus my gray. I know that I would probably have a little bit 
of a separating point in through here where those legs would go, where they would kind of converge and meet. So I've got both of those colors on my brush right now and I'm just really kind of creating some almost like little piles or tracks that were created by the person who put their you know legs like this. <laughs> so this again is just helping me to create the motion or the movement that was created inside there. So again, this is my dark blue plus gray on my brush and I'm just kind of creating these little areas, maybe a little bit more of the gray so that dark blue doesn't take over and get too powerful. So I don't really need much in the head because the head's not going to move too much when it's in there. So dark blue plus my gray, going to do the same thing here. First I'm going to give myself that little split part where the legs would kind of meet and you'll see how that plays out in a minute. And then my blue plus gray and just kind of allowing myself to make these swishy marks that are going to make it look like that, you know, somebody created this. And you, of course you could do yours whatever way works for you. I'm just kind of giving myself this fun representational um, way of doing it and it'll give myself a little bit of um, motion in it as well. So now that I've got that m movement kind of played out, now I'm just going to kind of um, amp up this little center section a little bit and the piles of snow around. So I'm going to pick up gray plus a little bit of white on my dirty brush. I'm going to give myself just a little bit of a pile of snow right in the middle in through here, but not too much. So again, just really messy, allowing myself to um, create this illusion of depth in through here. We are going to use our big brush to create more of a smooth type of look around the exterior, but this can help to to build up these little piles within the snow angel too, where I feel that I wouldn't necessarily be able to use my bigger brush. So I'm using gray plus white to create these little um, piles, the smaller ones within those snow angels. So this is gonna go in through here and then maybe a little bit around that neck. And again, the ones that are gonna be um, will smooth out the edges with the exterior snow in a minute, but this is just giving me the little kind of um, textured edges to the snow piles right around. And once I've got this one done, I'm gonna do the, the same thing over here. So gray plus white is gonna give me my little, um, help me with this little separator part and any of these little ones along the edges. So I'm really just kind of tapping in the gray and the white, allowing for myself to um, build the height of the little edges of the snow angel. So something like this, which is going to allow it to look three-dimensional. We'll, again, we'll be put, putting a little bit more information with our big brush in a minute, and I'm going for the light pile uh, on the side that is closer to the sun. So this is just allowing me to lift up that snow a bit so it looks like it's got some piles on it and because I'm using the gray and white I'm not making it too light so we when building again stuff like this you want to just start a little bit darker and work your way towards those lighter um, aspects of it and that's looking pretty good so I'm gonna do the same thing around my feet so again, just gray plus a little bit of white. And this is gonna be kind of more mark making. Um, I'm putting this light version on the top side of the feet as if the foot kind of pushed the snow forward as it was walking. So, or as that person stepped into the snow, they just kind of pushed that snow and made a little bit of a pile it right in front of the toe or in front of the foot. And as you get up into these lighter regions, you might just, you know, make these little kind of white polka dots along the front side of that toe or that foot. So you don't necessarily feel or need to do anything too invasive or too tricky. Just kind of putting that color pattern in there is going to help out. And then we're going to use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your small brush away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our snow. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The dominant color I'm gonna be using is white, 
but I may end up when I'm around this backside, I might use some of my um, bluish mixture or my grayish mixture that I had created. So really what I'm looking to do, my primary goal here is to make my snow angels the star of the show. So I really want them to pop out a lot. So I want to kind of pile up the snow on the edges of that snow angel to make it look like the snow has been pushed. Uh, I don't need it to go totally white, but I definitely want it to have that height and that, um, that volume to it. So I am gonna be using a lot of white. Uh, but I do want to also blend it into the rest of the snow. So I'm going to pile it pretty darn heavy, like around these edges, and then I will blend it out into the neighboring snow itself. So I'm going to always err on the side of caution and use very little bit of paint on my brush so I don't turn the whole thing white, but I can always add, keep adding if I need to. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of white on my brush, and I'm gonna start, you can really kind of start wherever you want, but it would be safer to start on the stuff on the top side where the sun is, because that would make sense to be the brightest. So I'm gonna tap in my bright white around here, something like this, and I'm gonna keep to the contour of my snow angel. So just kind of tapping in some, some bright white around the top edges of that. And then what I can do is I just take it and I kind of lightly rub it out into the neighboring snow. So I'm just taking that white and rubbing it out into the neighboring snow. So you can do this around the toes or the feet as well. I'm just kind of making sure that I've got it well blended so it doesn't look like an outline, so to speak, around that object. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do it to other areas. So. I definitely want a little bit around here too. So I'm just gonna kind of tap in some bright little marks in through there. And then I can just kind of rub it out. And again, I'm using very little paint because I, I want to maintain the, the depth in the rest of the snow. So if I just go in really heavy here and bring it heavy everywhere else, you're gonna lose the, the appearance of it being taller here than it is um, a, than it is towards the other snow. So you've got to have that, those levels of contrast in the color. So I'm reloading with some white paint. I'm going to do the same thing over in through here, maybe over here. And I'm, because I'm not using a lot of paint on my brush, I know I can't go too far <laughs> because it will, um, it's going to dry on me. So I'm just going to kind of do little areas and then just blend them out. And I may end up, after I'm done this, I may walk away, let it dry, look at it from a distance, see if there's anything more that I want to do to it. But again, my primary goal is to just kind of get these um, little piles of snow looking like they're, they're higher than this part in through here and that they, I still have some contrast with the other snow around it. So that's looking pretty good. And I'm just gonna kind of keep on this quest. The, the snow on the back side, I might treat that a little bit differently. I might add some, of, some gray into it so I still have a pile, but um, it, so it looks maybe a little bit darker than um, this bright stuff that I'm putting here. And then I'll get rid of any chalk marks that I might still have visible. I'm missing like the little edge over here. So you can just kind of tap in any little light areas that you feel you need. So that looks good. I'm gonna tackle maybe over here a little bit before I go to that back side where it might be a little bit darker. And I've got quite a bit of paint on my brush right now, which is why I just kind of tackled two areas at once and then I put it on and then I just kind of rub it out. So I've got it on in the brightest area that I want and then I just kind of rub it out and I'm just looking for it to look like it's being, you know, it's piled up a bit. This has got a little pile in through here. So I'll just pile, pack that on a little bit more. So if you didn't get it as fully um, voluminous as you had wanted on that first pass, this is the time where you can, you can make it lift even more. So even if you, you know, did it and it's not bright enough, you can just keep adding that white until you feel like it's as bright as you want. On this backside, I think right now I'm gonna just start with the remnants that are on my brush and I just kind of 
rub it on there and then kind of blend it out and see if that's gonna give me enough volume on it. I'm gonna pick up a little, I'm gonna go white with a little bit of gray, or yeah, white with a little bit of gray on my brush just to get a little bit more of this pile going on in through here. Even though this is on the dark side, on the opposing side of the sun, I still feel like it should be a little bit lighter than what's on the inside. So that's where I just put a little bit of the white plus gray and then rubbing it out is gonna help it blend in with that darker snow underneath. So same thing with here. I feel like this should be a little bit lighter than what's on the inside of the angel. So the inside of the angel to me feels like it should be the darkest. So that's why I'm just kind of adding a little bit more lightness around. So that's looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna, again, just kind of step away from it, see if there's, um, and you know, step away at a distance, see if there's anything else that I might want to add to it or take away from it, but that's the gist of it. So once you're done with this, we are going to be using our um, small brush for the next step. So you can put your large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat on our people. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The color that I'm gonna use is black. You could certainly use any dark color, I suppose, for your base. I'm gonna be just having them wearing some dark clothing. So if you wanted to use brown or any, or even just dark gray or dark blue or something, you can certainly use that. But I'm gonna be using my black as my base coat because I feel the back of them would be pretty darn dark because the light is over on the other side and is pretty powerful. So I'm gonna use black with a little bit of water on my brush, which will give me uh, good fluidity in my brush, which will allow me to make some small marks. I've already got my, um, stick people in place. So I'm just going to kind of make them into real people with a little bit more shape. So I'm going to take this from the top of this head and just give myself a um, vertical line in through here. That'll just start my painting process. I've got my head already kind of established where I want it. So I'm going to give myself a little oval type of shape for that head. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little collar coming down. Oops, that was a little bit too much paint on my brush. A little, we're going to have a little bit of a neck. Then I'm going to have a little winter collar kind of sticking out in through there. I'm going to have some shoulders coming out in through here. I'm going to do this midsection of his jacket. I'm picturing this to be dad who's brought his kid out to build some snow angels, but if you want yours to be a female or two, you know, two adults, you can certainly feel free to make yours into whatever you would like. Um, I'm picturing also them to be wearing some nice warm winter clothing, so it's gonna be nice and fluffy and have lots of volume to it, so if they look a little bit larger than they normally would, that's because they've got big, thick, winter clothing on. I'm going to pull a little kind of uh, mitten down in through here, something like that, a little sleeve. And of course you can finagle yours in whatever way you want. We've got a leg coming down in through here. And of course doing clothing in a silhouetted type of way like this, if you just every now and again kind of bump out a little piece, especially if, I mean, he's wearing winter pants so you could have like little ripples in those pants and that's going to make it look a little bit more realistic as opposed to a super straight line so even if you don't want to or um, feel the need to put all kinds of um, posture in it you can always imply you know movement and stuff like that by just making your lines not super straight i'm just kicking out this little foot as if it's walking we're going to see the bottom of the foot like this so that when i go to do my um shadow i will have that one a little bit away from the ground maybe this needs to be just a little bit longer in through here yeah there we go that looks better to me and i'm going to go ahead and do my um i think i need to make this neck a little bit wider before i move move on there we go that looks better so my um, small person here I'm just gonna again I like to kind of start with that that vertical line just to keep myself centered and you know not make it too big or too small so that kind of even though we had our little stick figure 
already in play, this helps me to, again, just kind of build it in, um, in a way that's easy for me. So I start with my head, I've got a little neck in through here, maybe he's got a collar in through here as well, and then the shoulders are going to come down. Again, this, person, this little one's got some big clothing on to keep them nice and warm, so this is going to come down pretty far, maybe, you know, well past where you would think the waist would go, so maybe somewhere in through here would work, and then we'll just put some, some legs. I think I need actually to be a little bit wider, so so it can stay nice and warm. <laughs> I know that I, I always like to have the biggest coat possible when I'm going out in the snow. So I like to put my snow people with big clothing as well. So this, one, this little guy is gonna get an arm kind of swinging out like this with maybe a little mitten coming off down at the bottom like that. This arm's gonna be hanging on to the adult persons somewhere in through here. And again, because it's kind of silhouetted, I don't really need much detail at all. Just something that is a nice believable shape. And then maybe these legs, I just separate them just a smudge at the bottom to imply a little bit of a footstep, so to speak. And that's all I'm going to do for these guys. I'll probably, um, you know, step back from it, see if there's any little adjusting that I want to do, make sure that I've got the coat kind of coming down where I want it to or the width of those snow pants, make sure that's as wide as I want them to look. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our people. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, white, red, and blue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be creating these nice long shadows from my light source of my people on the ground. And then I'm gonna give their clothing some a little bit of color and form to show the shape of their bodies. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black and water on my brush at the same time to create my shadows on the ground. I'm gonna have this right leg disconnected a little bit from the ground uh, so it looks like it's up in motion. And I'm gonna have my shadows long and skewed to the side so it speaks to where that light source is. So I have water and black on my brush to show, or so I can have my uh, shadow mark be see-through, which means you'll be able to see some of that snow underneath it. I'll be for this leg in through here. This is going to be my disconnected leg, so I'm just going to kind of start that little shadow a little bit away from it. And I don't really need to do much to this shadow. I'm just really kind of giving the implication um, or the idea, the information. We've got a little arm in through there. We've got the torso in through here. I don't need to do much, just give it a you know semi-believable um, shape to it. I do want the arm to be connected to the little child's arm at some point, so I'm just gonna bring that to the left, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do my shadow for my child. So again, somewhere in through here is where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna give myself just a diagonal line to where I think the top of the head would go, and then I can modify it with a little bit more detail. I think this left leg, maybe that one's a little bit disconnected from the ground a bit. So this will be maybe the center of his body. Just adding a little bit more water to the equation. I've got the arm kind of coming out over here. So just a little, little bit coming out there. I've got the head up in through here with the shoulder. And then we've got an arm that's gonna connect to this arm over here. So again, you don't need to do a whole heck of a lot, just giving that information of, of the shadow or of the direction, the size of the bodies works well. I'm thinking that's pretty good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put black and white on my brush at the same time to give myself a couple little highlights on the pants. I'm gonna have these pants being um, just black snow pants. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight on the left side over in through here. So this is black and white, maybe a little bit on the cuffs of the pants, something like that, or the shoes. I'm gonna, I just picked up a tiny bit more white just to give myself a little bit more information. And I'm putting it below where I had the shirt line. So maybe we've got a little highlight there. 
maybe a little wrinkles coming down that side. Maybe this cuff goes in this direction, so that'll tell you that that foot is up and then maybe just a little bit in through there. So again, not doing much of anything, just kind of giving myself a little bit of a highlight. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put red clothing on my child. So I'm gonna start with red paint on my brush. And again, the light source is over to the left. So I'm just gonna give myself these little red um, areas on the left-hand side of the body mostly on the left hand side you can even go a little bit past the footprint of, of the um, jacket if you just bring that red out just a smudge that's going to put this nice bright highlight on uh, that just the edge of that piece of clothing and that'll give you um, the illusion that it's being illuminated i'm going to put some on the top of the head too i might even put a little pom-pom on the top of this hat that i didn't put earlier so put a little bit of red. Yeah, I'm gonna just bring out a little pom-pom. There we go. <laughs> I always had pom-poms on my hats when I was a kid. And then maybe, because my mom knit, knit a lot of our hats and they always had pom-poms on them for some reason. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit on the top side of this arm in through here. And now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white on my dirty brush. I have red with a teeny bit of white just to give myself just a little bit more of a highlight over on that left-hand side. So that's all I'm gonna do for this one and then i'm going to wash and dry my brush and i'm going to put some blue clothing on my adult so i'm going to start with just blue on my brush and i'm going to do the same exercise so you can start at the hat if you want to put that highlight just past your black mark and that's going to give that left hand side that extra bit of highlight and the blue and the red when they start to dry before you put the white into it you might not be able to see them a whole heck of a lot because they're on top of the black but as soon as you start introducing the white as your highlight um, as a little bit of a highlight that will help to um, help you see that color a bit more and of course you can do any color that you want if you have a favorite purple jacket that you want to um, represent in through here feel free to to put whatever colors that you want it's your it's your interpretation of of a you know couple of people having winter festivities I just picked up a little bit of white so I can put my extra highlight on here white on my dirty brush and then just gonna blend this in so I can have a little bit of form on my person and then once you've got this done you can make any little adjustments that you want and then we're going to use this same small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it so i typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right i'm going to be using my small brush I'm gonna sign this with black paint in, my, in the bottom left. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or however you'd like to sign your name. It's totally up to you because it's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very fun winter activity image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.